The road to London begins today. Brotherly love and Philadelphia and the return of a star in Colorado next on The Daily. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily. Here with Greg Lawless, I'm Nick Fershaw, and CONCACAF Olympic qualifying is finally upon us. It begins on Thursday night for both the Canadian team and the U.S. team. The U.S. team at 9 p.m. Eastern up against Cuba on the Universal Sports Network and in Spanish on Mondos. You can find a live chat right here on MLSsoccer.com. you got to assume that this is one the U.S. team can get, but which players are you looking forward to seeing up against Cuba? Well, I think you got to go with the big stars. I mean, we've been talking now for almost a year about this Olympic team and getting together and how good they're going to be and all the stuff about who was going to be the coach. And Finally, Caleb Porter is signed. And now it comes down to, for me, the big stars need to show up. Breck Shea, Juan Agudelo, Freddie Adu, these are the three guys I think that need to drive this team and they're, basically they're, it's about, all about attack, right? They need to get out and pl play this attack. They're playing a 4-3-3 that Caleb Porter has installed there alongside what the full national team is doing with Jurgen Klinsmann. It's a very similar system. I love that the youth teams are now going to play the yeah. same system as the full team. And so let those guys go out and attack. Let them do what they do best, which is finding spaces, finding chances, creating chances, and putting them away. And for the Canadian team, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, they're up against El Salvador. They actually opened the tournament. You can find that game in Spanish on Telemundo. Next up, it looks like a crisis has been averted for the Philadelphia Union between Peter Novak, the manager there, and Danny Caleb, the captain of the Union. They had a bit of a flare-up last weekend over whether or not Caleb should have played in that loss to the Colorado Rapids. Looks like they've had a conversation behind closed doors and made peace. Yeah, well, this was a strange one because right from the start, no one was really sure what was really going on. Yeah. Was Danny Califf hurt? He said no. Peter Novak said he didn't play him because he was hurt, but he was in the 18, so you're sort of confused about all of that. Looks like they came together, they had their, you know, they broke bread together, and, and now they, they seem to have found a common ground. This is important for the union. They need to get their season on track, and Danny Califf, I think, will be a big part of that. In the back, he's been a massive presence for them since day one of this club's existence, in fact. And Peter Novak needs him to be on board if they're going to turn it around early in the season. Well, one player they're going to miss uh, on that back line in the near future is Shannon Williams, the defender who was called up by Caleb Porter's Olympic squad. Sort of a last-minute thing in place of Josh Gatt, who was called back to Europe by his club. Shannon Williams getting called up. Peter Novak has an issue, said this is traumatic for the player and the team. Well, you know, Peter Novak knows where this is coming from, too. Let's not forget. In 2008, he was the Olympic coach, yeah. so he understands what's involved in bringing players in and getting them released from clubs. And I think the biggest thing for Novak is that they didn't know this was coming at all. Williams has not been called into camps previously for this Olympic team, so he was. this was sort of out of the blue for them. And now they lose a player that they think is very important. I'm a big fan of Williams, so I think it's great for the Olympic yeah. team. It's not great for the Union, though. And, of course, they're also going to miss Freddie Adu for that yeah. Olympic qualifying. See if the Philadelphia Union can turn around a very slow start. Two losses in their first two games. <laughs> Moving on, some promising news for the Colorado Rapids. Greg, they're 2-0 on the season, and they could be getting striker Connor Casey back in the lineup pretty soon. He actually returned to the practice field for the first time on Wednesday after suffering that torn Achilles tendon last year. Connor Casey back in the lineup potentially early April. What does he bring to the Rapids? Well, he brings what he's brought for many years now in MLS, which is that big presence up top where they can play it into his feet. He can turn. He can hold off a defender. He also can score. Yep. He's a guy that if Omar Cummings continues to find that, he's finding great space, by the way, Omar Cummings out on the flanks when he's floating. This looks like Omar Cummings from a couple of years ago that we've yeah. seen in the first two games. He's got his, his pace, his quickness on that first step. Finding that space, if he has another option in the, in the middle, like a Connor Casey to put the ball away, Cummings is looking for a big season ahead of him. And Connor Casey, people forget, was off to a very good start right. last year. He had six goals in 14 games before he suffered that Achilles injury. The Rapids are hopeful that he can return April 7th against Real Salt Lake. The Rapids are back in action this Sunday at the New York Red Bulls. Last but not least, looking ahead to one of the biggest matchups of the weekend. It's on Friday night, the Houston Dynamo at the Seattle Sounders, 10 p.m. Eastern on the NBC Sports Network. Arlo White uh, returning to Seattle for this one. But look, one of the storylines, the Houston Dynamo, they're 2-0 so far this season. They've played very well on the road. You think they can go up to CenturyLink and can get another result? I think this is going to be the toughest one of the, of the first three games, at least. Let's not forget, the first game was against Chivas. second one was against San Jose, a couple teams that didn't make the playoffs last year. Now they're going up against a very good Seattle Sounders team in that raucous atmosphere at CenturyLink, which Sounders defender Mark Birch actually said was the best atmosphere he's ever played in in his career. 
And they're going up against a Sounders team that has some confidence. Despite the injury to Mauro Rosales that's going to keep him out for a little while, the Sounders got that great win against Toronto. David Estrada is now sort of the starlet of MLS, and so this is a tough game for Houston. However, the Dynamo are the first team in MLS history to open with two road shutout wins. So this is a Dynamo team that knows how to grind out results. They should have Corey Ash back in the lineup uh, from his injury yeah. that kept him out last week. And Jeff Cameron, to me, is playing some of the best soccer that we've ever seen from him. So this is going to be a very great, uh, tight match, I think. Man, one thing to remember, the Houston Dynamo, they've never won up in Seattle in three games all time. Uh, yet to crack the code up against the Seattle Sounders. Again, that game Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern on the NBC Sports Network. That does it for us. A couple things we want to remind you. You can always log on to MLSsoccer.com and vote for the AT&T Goal of the Week and the Save of the Week. You can find all the ways to vote on MLSsoccer.com. And the latest edition of Extra Time Radio will come out later today. We had Joe Jow from the uh, Olympic team, the U.S. team, a good guy, a nice personality. And, and supposedly a great dancer. And a very good dancer. Not a very good bowler, <laughs> but a good dancer. You can find that on iTunes and Buzzsprout. And for all the latest headlines in MLS, log on to MLSsoccer.com.